Hey, James Mulvaney here. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing this product, which is the Universal Audio Vault 2. And it has a little button on it, which is they describe as built-in analog tone shaping. So I'm intrigued to see what that does. All of that coming right up. So welcome to this video. Um, if you're new to this channel, I, I love doing things like this, reviewing audio and video gear. Uh, so hit that subscribe button on the turn on your notifications because I'm always releasing content like this. Um, I'm also founder of radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm and Q Podcasts. So you can always go and check them out if you like. Uh, if you're thinking about starting your own radio station, launching a podcast or you have a podcast and you want to get connected with guests, those sites have got everything you need to do one of those things. Today's video is all about this. It's about the vault. Um, so first thing, let's get this thing unboxed and find out what is in here. So let's take this thing out of the box. Um, so this product is an audio interface, which is basically a really high quality USB sound card. There are lots and lots of options on the market here. Um, we've reviewed quite a few of them in the past. Um, we use a lot of them when we're working with clients producing podcasts and radio content. Um, so this, I guess, is designed to compete with perhaps the Scarlett 2i2 or the Audion ID4. It comes in around $200 as part of the price point. And one of the features that this actually offers is you can power it directly through the USB channel. Um, but it also has an external set power supply as well, uh, which is great if you're particularly wanting to record perhaps on the move, you can plug it into your iPad or your iPhone uh, via the USB-C connection to a lightning cable. The first thing I noticed about this, build quality is really good. Um, we used to see this on a lot of audio interfaces now, solid metal, no plastic involved. Um, everything is kind of laid out all, all along the front, so you've got your two XLR inputs. You can also uh, use these with um, jacks if you're perhaps recording instruments. Most of the time, what we're going to be looking at today is how you can use this to record spoken word and audio. We're obviously, we're a podcasting or radio company, so that's kind of what we do. I couldn't tell you about recording musical instruments, but I'm sure it's very good at doing that as well. Um, this is obviously like a really entry level um, device. You know, this has got two inputs. So if you're thinking about recording um, perhaps multiple people uh, or you're recording, you know, a sort of live session with lots of different instruments, you probably want to go with something a bit more beefy. Um, however, something to sit on your desk, something that's going to be good quality in terms of, um, you know, your inputs, but also as well, if you've got a good quality pair of monitor speakers, this got outputs on the back as well, uh, and the audio quality you'll get from this will undoubtedly be a lot better uh, for inputs and outputs than you would have using built-in microphones or built-in speakers, um, you know, on an iMac or a PC or a laptop. So along the front here, obviously, we've got our standard controls. Um, you've got your headphones. Uh, you've got uh, this button, which I mentioned earlier, which is vintage, which I'm really intrigued to try, try out. And supposedly, this gives that kind of warm old school tube amp style effect to your microphones, which I'm kind of, as I say, interested to see because not many of these devices will shape or alter the audio. They kind of record at fairly flat level. Um, so if you want to apply any processing and you're recording using one of these, you either have to daisy chain another device, such as maybe the DBX286, uh, which we've used, which is a microphone processor, or you'll have to apply the processing in post. So I'm intrigued to see how much difference this button makes. So as well as the uh, vintage button here, this also comes with a software plugin bundle uh, for your DAW. So you can basically apply various different um, styles in post as well. One of the things I'm intrigued to do is test out this vintage button. So we're gonna be comparing this unit with a variety of different microphones. Firstly, we're gonna test this out with um, kind of our go-to mic for podcasting, which is, which is the Shure SM7B. It's a dynamic microphone. It's very gain hungry. So for a lot of audio interfaces, you have to whack it right up to the top to get a good signal. So I'm intrigued to see how much gain this thing provides. We're also going to be trying the Electro Voice RE20, which is a classic radio microphone. has been used in broadcast studios for years and years. And we're also going to be testing it with the very expensive uh, Neumann U87, which is a condenser microphone. Again, really common, used in lots of radio studios and also recording studios as well. So let's head over into the sound booth, plug this thing in and see what results we can get. Okay, so we are now in our sound booth 
And the idea of this is it stops external noise from coming in. And also we've got lots of sound treatment on the walls uh, so you can get a really good quality recording. This will give you a good idea of how these microphones perform with this device. Uh, so right now, this microphone here is a Shure SM7B. This mic is notoriously gain hungry. So we've actually had to turn the gain on the Universal Volt 2 up as loud as it will go in order to get a good quality signal or the right level of signal from this microphone. Quite often when you do this on some audio interfaces, if you boost it right up to the top, you get a little bit of a background hiss. So if I just remain silent for a sec, I just want to see if you can pick up on any of that hiss. But anyway, um, this is the Shure SM7B. It's our go-to mic when we're recording a lot of podcasts. So now we've engaged the vintage button on uh, the Universal Audio uh, Vault, and I want to see what you think of the sound here, the Shure SM7B. Now we've got the vintage mode engaged. Do you think it sounds better? Do you think it sounds worse? Uh, I guess the vintage button is meant to just do that. It's meant to kind of make it give it that sort of vintage characteristic of old school audio, which some people like. You know, some people want that kind of warmth, that analog type sound, and some people prefer uh, a cleaner sound, I guess. Um, but, you know, it is uh, up to you to decide. You be the judge. Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so now we're testing out... Um, one of the most famous radio broadcasting mics in existence. Um, normally you see this is kind of like a grey colour. We've got the uh, black edition, which looks quite cool. Um, this is the Electro Voice RE20, and it's famously used by like, literally thousands of radio broadcasters all over the USA. This is a super popular mic, um, both for, for radio and also voiceover work, um, and also recording things like kick drums and stuff like that as well really versatile microphone has a really good sound to it and here's what it sounds like when it's connected to the universal audio vault 2 uh, let me know in the comments if you've got this microphone or what you think it sounds like when it's connected to the ua um, interface also we turned down the gain slightly this isn't quite as gain hungry as a short sm7b uh, so this is maybe around 75 percent uh, in terms of the, the gain the volume knob Whereas with the Shaw mic, we were probably around 100% uh, to get a similar level. So we're obviously going to be tweaking this slightly in post, but there's no processing or anything like that applied. So now I've engaged the vintage button, and I'm intrigued to see what you think this microphone sounds like when we've got vintage mode engaged. Do you think there's much of a difference? Does it give the microphone a better audio quality? Do you think this would sound better for your podcast or your radio show? Intrigued to know what you think? Let me know in the comments. And uh, we'll now test out a couple of condenser microphones as well. We're going to be next testing the U87 and also an Aston mic as well. Okay, so we are now using one of my favorite microphones. Uh, this is the Neumann U87. It's considered widely to be one of the best microphones in the world. It's very expensive. It's used by a lot of radio stations on a higher end, uh, such as BBC Radio 1, uh, BBC Radio 2, and also um, NPR over in the US. Um, it's out of reach of a lot of people because of its price tag. It retails around $3,200, I believe. could be wrong. Um, and obviously, with condenser microphones, we've turned the gain down. They're not as gain-hungry as um, dynamic mics. Uh, so this is around 50% gain. But this is one of the best microphones. It's used by pretty much every recording artist you can imagine uh, to record and lay down their vocal tracks. Um, it's really versatile, used in lots of radio and podcasts, say on the very high end, uh, voiceover work, you name it, this microphone has been there. And um, it's been around for about 50 years. So it's one of the best microphones in the world. As I say, uh, we're really lucky to have one here in the office that we can mess around with and test. And I think it kind of... It sort of sets a good benchmark of what you can expect from an audio interface when you're recording with a microphone of this caliber. Um, so what do you think this sounds like? Let me know in the comments. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the vintage mode again. Okay, so now I've engaged the vintage mode uh, on the Universal Audio Vault 2 and connected to the Neumann U87 microphone. I want to see how the vintage mode shapes the sound quality of this mic 
Do you think this mic really needs much shaping? Because it is kind of a neutral sound. A lot of people describe it as kind of very pleasant, um, but also um, not particularly kind of charismatic in terms of like it's a nice flat sound that you can kind of adjust or tweak in post-production depending on your needs, which is why it's really favoured, I think, because a lot of people like that, that it kind of pr produces a very true sound to what is actually being recorded, e.g. whether it's instruments or vocals. Let me know in the comments what you think of the sound quality when we're talking to you through the vintage mode. Does it give my voice that extra vintage quality that you want to hear? Okay, so to finish up on our final run of different microphones and tests, uh, we've got the Aston uh, Origin here. Um, this is a more budget-friendly condenser microphone. It retails around £200 here in the UK, so I guess it'd probably be about $250, something like that. Um, Again, check the prices. We'll put links to all of the microphones in the descriptions below that I've used in this video. Uh, but I wanted to give you a comparison of a you know really high-end microphone, condenser microphone, uh, e.g. Uh, the U87, and compare it to a really good quality uh, but more budget-friendly option. Um, we really like the sound of this microphone. Intrigued to know what you think. So let's quickly engage the vintage mode and see what you think then. Okay, so now we have engaged the vintage mode. I want to know if you think there's much of a sound difference when it comes to the uh, Aston Origin microphone. Does the characteristics of this microphone change, particularly with the vintage mode? Yes or no? Um, and overall, which microphone out of all the ones we've tested do you think sounds the best? So there we have it. That is the Universal Audio Vault 2, uh, two-channel interface. Uh, I'm intrigued to know what you think about this device, uh, the sound quality, and also the button, the magic button. Do you think it makes uh, everything sound good? Uh, leave a comment below with your thoughts if you're perhaps thinking about buying one or if you're weighing up buying one of these versus one of the other interfaces that I mentioned at the start of the video. Um, and also if you've got any questions, always happy to help out. Please leave a comment. Remember to like this video if you found it useful and I will speak to you very soon. Take it easy. Bye bye. What makes the difference between a successful radio station and a failed project? Well, after working with tens of thousands of broadcasters over the past 15 years and helping lots of people start their own radio stations, I see the same mistakes being made time and time again. So what I've done is I've put together a guide called the five step radio startup checklist which really covers everything from concepting your radio station to marketing it. And this guide, I believe, will make the difference between you having a successful venture with longevity and creating something that doesn't quite hit the mark. Go and grab your copy now for free at jamesm.com radio. Just enter your name, your email address, and I'll send it over to you straight away. You're going to find it really useful. There's tons of information there which will help you with concepting and launching your brand and bringing it to market.